Hey there, it's Brittany and I'm back with another polymer clay video. Today I'm going to show you how to make some really cute um, charms that you can use for earrings, pendants, bracelets, whatever you'd like to um, make with them. And I'm going to use just a few items. So I have a um, pasta machine, but you can also use a um, clay roller. This is just an acrylic one from the Sculpey starter pack. Um, I have these stamps. Um, these came from... I want to see Joanne's a long time ago. Um, you could probably find any cupcake stamps online. Uh, you don't have to use cupcake shape stamps. So you can just use whatever texture sheet. You can make your own texture. Um, anything that you would like to see in your uh, charm. I am going to use this cupcake cutter. It's a smaller one from um, from the Heart Supplies. I'll leave a link below. Um, and then I'll also tell you right here what size this is. I, I can't remember what size off the top of my head it is. Um, I will measure it and put it in the video. Uh, I have a paintbrush, just any old paintbrush will do. Um, probably a smaller one because these are a little bit more intricate. Um, and then I have a couple mica powders. I got these years ago, and I do mean years ago, probably 2008. And they're, I mean, still full, but they've been in storage for a very long time. So. Um, I actually used to do a lot with makeup, a lot, and I actually still do quite a bit, but um, that's what I originally got these for, but then when I got into clay, I realized I can use um, mica powder. I also have some old eyeshadow that I'll be using. Um, I have lots of old eyeshadows, so this is the set that I'm going to be using today along with these two mica powders, but you can use paint, you can use patina, you can use eyeshadow, mica powder, wax paint, whatever float your boat to color your charms. Um, you can use chalk, anything. Um, but that's what I'm gonna use today. And uh, I also am going to use white Primo clay, um, just regular Sculpey Primo clay in white. All right, I'll get everything together and we'll get started. Okay, normally when working with white clay, I try to say work as clean as possible. Um, clean your clay of any dust and debris, meaning use some alcohol um, and a spray bottle or a, um, a cotton swab. Oh, sorry, I'm moving the camera. And, you know, keep everything super clean. Want uh, dust, dust before you clean. But this one's going to be covered, um, so we don't have to work that clean. And you can see I have a ton of lint in here. Actually, I should probably clean off some of that. Um, but normally, like, if you're, you need plain white clay, um, yeah, I would definitely work a little bit more cleanly than this. Um, this is the thickest setting on my pasta machine, and I doubled it. So it, my pasta machine is just the cheapo one that I got from Michael's when I decided, oh, let's try um, polymer clay and see where it goes. And then, so I haven't upgraded it yet. It's mine starts at a number nine and goes down. So it's the nine thickness, but I doubled it over twice. So it's very, very thick. I'm actually gonna get some alcohol and clean this off a little bit because I didn't realize there was that much lint in it. I'll be right back. Okay, I just put um, a little cap full of alcohol to the left of my tile and I have um, a cotton swab. So I'm just going to soak the cotton swab and then go over the areas very lightly that have the, um, the lint on them and slowly drag that off. So another thing you could do is if you're going to sand your piece, um, you can always buff it later if it's just gonna stay white. Um, and then you can always um, use it after you're completely done with the project, you can always clean it up then too. Um, it's nicer to start out with the clean slab of clay. So I'm just slowly removing some of that surface lint some of these are a little embedded, but that's okay. Like I said, I'm not going to, I don't really need, need the white, the clay to be super white um, because I'm not going, it's not gonna show, but it's nice to start with clean clay. And this also helps to remove um, fingerprints, smudges, any imperfections in the clay before you bake too. Okay. So I'm not even going to use all this surface area. I'm only going to use a very little bit. So um, I'm just going to finish clean cleaning it up, let this dry a little bit. Okay. 
you could probably use a baby wipe, but sometimes baby wipes leave lint behind themselves. So better to just use the spot treatment with the Q-tip. Okay, so the other thing I mentioned, I forgot to mention was we need an acrylic block to put our stamp on. This stamp just really, really, really amazingly coordinated with this um, cupcake cutter I had. Like I said, this is a one in a million chance. I've had this for years and I just got this in a grab bag from, from the Heart the Supplies, but they sell them separately too. So I thought they were perfect. Um, earlier this week we had National Vanilla Cupcake Day. Um, tomorrow's my birthday and my best friend really, really loves cupcakes. So I wanted to make her some earrings and maybe um, a bra bracelet. So anyway, I was thinking, what do I have that I could use? And I thought back to these two things and I thought it would just be really fun to make, show you guys how to use stamps on clay and um, use uh, shape cutters. So, okay, so I put my stamp on my acrylic block I'm going to turn it over. I don't really need to line anything up here because it's just a mound of, or a um, piece of clay. I'm just going to stamp firmly twice and the stamp may come off the block because it's not very, the back of the stamp isn't very clean. I'm going to press. I'm not going to rock because rocking will distort the image quite like it would if you if you rock the um, cutter. So I'm just going to press firmly. And then I have a very nice image, like it's almost perfect. And you can't really see it because my camera has a hard time um, focusing on the white clay. Um, I'm going to make one more of those. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna make one more of those. And then um, you can see there's a little bit of lint in there and we'll clean that up in a little bit. All right, I'm going to make one more. Press firmly, don't rock. Just give even pressure and if you need to, you can move your fingers around. Just don't rock the, the acrylic block. Okay, we'll pull that up and we have a fantastic image there. Um, next, I and you have two options here. You can color it while it's in the clay still and you haven't used your cutter, but I wanna keep as much white clay as possible uh, because there's it's hard to find white clay right now and um, it's a little bit, it's just, it's, it can be more precise if you're, you do it after it's cut. So I'm going to line up my uh, cupcake cutter as, to the best of my ability. It's not the exact um, seam cut, but it's so close that, you know, if unless you're the one making it, you can't really tell um, or you're watching this video. Uh, so I'm just going to do where it feels good and I'm just going to press straight down. And you can use your acrylic block to push all the way through. These are going to be some chunky charms. Usually um, polymer clay, I don't make this thick, but um, I thought they would be really cute thick charms. Okay, so there's one. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing right next to it. Just put it where it feels right. Press down, straight down. Just push this a little bit and then pull straight back up. Don't, don't rock the cutter. And then I'm just going to pull away my excess clay. So I have two really cute, yummy um, charms. Let me see if I can get this to focus. There we go, aren't those cute? Now there is a little bit of schmutz around the edges. We'll clean that up and then we're going to color them. So um, to clean up the clay, I just need to find my razor blade and slowly peel them off of the tile. Okay. So we have the first one, and I've shown you this before. I'm just gonna take my finger, and you're absolutely able to clean these up after you bake, but it's a lot easier if you do it beforehand. Um, you can use many different things to sand. I have a Dremel, I have nail files, I have sandpaper, and I will sand them if they need it afterwards. Oh, sorry, I'm not doing it in the camera. Um, however, it's easier to get these little crumb crumblies off beforehand and then do minimal sanding afterwards. Plus then I won't have to worry about ruining my finish later. Um, just be careful not to get um, too many fingerprints on them. However, you could just use the um, Q-tip to remove those later. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this one up too. Make sure you guys can actually see it in the camera. Okay. 
okay. It's not perfect, but it's cute. Isn't that a cute little charm? And then you can make a whole bunch of these. So they're, they're, I'm going to show you one way to decorate them today, but you absolutely you can make a whole bunch of white ones, shove them you know, in a drawer after you bake them, and then customize them later on. You can offer custom charms if you make um, polymer uh, clay jewelry for people. They say that, you know, my birthday's coming up. I like per per turquoise and purple. Okay, I can make you something. Um, what we're going to do today, I'm going to actually, instead of using that, instead of using this color, like I was going to on the cupcake base, I'm going to grab my old... Oops, sorry. I'm gonna grab my old eyeshadow and I'm going to cup I'm going to decorate the base of the cupcake right here with eyeshadow. But first I'm going to go ahead and use the lighter color. I want these to be vanilla cupcakes. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the, my white to make them shimmery. And I'm just cleaning my paintbrush a little because I used purple earlier. Alright. So I have this white, and you a little is going to go a long way. This is called Ultra Shimmer Mica Powder. That was what it was called when I bought it. It was like a tester a million years ago from um, the website Coastal Scents. They're still around, but these, these testers aren't still around. And this is just such a yummy, yummy, glittery white. Now, uh, From the Heart Supplies also has mica, and I will link to their mica powders. So... Get as much as you like onto your brush. You're not gonna need a whole lot. Um, this stuff just looks like yummy vanilla candy. And I'm going to brush it on the tops of the, the charms. I guess I want them to look like they're frosted with yummy glitter. And the good thing about this and doing the white first is you can, if you goof up and get some on the bottom, you can cover that with the purple or whatever color you wanna use. Um, you can't really come back if you start with the purple and get it on the white part and then later can't get it off. You might, you might be able to get it off with alcohol. So I don't know if this is showing up very well in the camera, but man, it is so yummy. Mica powders are so awesome. They're kind of messy, but that's okay. Crafting can get messy. Yes, Laura, these are for you. <laughs> it's not going to be a surprise. Okay, so I've got the sides and the tops completely covered with my mica powder. And if you're wondering, yes, we will have to seal these. But I want to bring it closer to the camera so you can see how yummy that is. Such a beautiful pearl color. <gasps> it's so yummy. And if you wanted to, after they're baked, you could put something dimensional. I don't know if there's like a dimensional glitter or something somebody went on to use, but that sounds yummy to me too. Okay, so I'm going to clean off my brush a little bit on some paper towel. And mica powder can, cleans up pretty well. This has got a little bit of shimmer, but I'm going with a darker color, so it should be okay. You can use totally different brushes if you'd like. I'm being a little lazy. So I'm going to bring in my colors here, and I'm going to grab this purple. And this is a shimmer set, too. Um, this is very, very well loved, and I've used just about every color in this palette, but I need to replace it. It's old. <laughs> and um, I'm going to go ahead and paint the micro powder onto the base of my and yes, this is a beginner project, but you have to begin somewhere. I, I did, um, a lot of my subscribers have asked for beginner polymer clay projects, and I thought this would be a fantastic one. Um, there are some very complicated polymer clay um, tutorials out there, but we can all use beginners. All right, and I just wanna be a little more careful so I don't get the purple on the white. If you want, you can blow it a little bit. I'm trying to not blow my entire <laughs> white um, container. All right, so I've got the, the sides, the top covered in purple. Now, if you'd like, after they're baked or before they're baked, you can always paint 
in the um, bow, but I really like how that looks. And it's just such a pretty shimmery purple. Um, I have another one of these done already to make the pair. I want to do this one in turquoise so I can have a bracelet for myself. <laughs> I'll be right back once I figure out what that Okay, is. so I think I'm going to go with this bright turquoise right here. Grab some on my brush. And paint it on, oh yeah, that's perfect. Yay! It's my bestie and myself on a plate <laughs> we um one one of her birthdays um i just i know she loves cupcakes so much one of her birthdays she didn't want to know what we were doing and so i planned a, a fun day and then we we're gonna end it by going i think to the movies and dinner and stuff but i took her to not one but two different cupcake shops and i think that was just it was so much fun and we we ate way too many cupcakes but it was worth it so I miss that. But that's one of the very few things I miss about Ohio is hanging out with my best friend every time, all the time. But anyway, it's a fun memory. Okay, I'm almost finished. I just want to make sure I get the side. And like I said, you could be more precise than this. You could do several different colors, whatever way you want to decorate it. This is just one of probably hundreds of thousands of ways to decorate polymer clay okay all right so what we're gonna do is and and you have the option you can make a hole in the top before you bake um, I, I I tend to drill with my um, my Dremel or my hand drill I'll probably drill these with my hand drill I don't want to mess it up with my Dremel I'm going to bake these at, at the manufacturer's recommended uh, temperature which is 275 degrees um, they say for 30 minutes I always go for an hour and then I'll be back okay it is a couple days later I got sidetracked <laughs> uh, my mom's visiting for my birthday and um, we have been having a ton of fun so uh, here are baked pieces this, and I have already sealed them. So this one has a little bit of purple bleeding up into the white. I'm okay with that. Um, I've sealed them using Verithane spray, and I'll show you in just a moment. Um, but I also made a cute little like peach pear to go with them. And so we have a purple pear, a peach pear, and then I just made one little charm for myself in turquoise. So I'm going to make a pair of uh, the peach and the purple into um, earrings. Let me grab the Verithane so you guys can see it's on my other table and I'll be right back. Okay, so here's the Verithane. I use a spray, um, the Ultimate Polyurethane Water-Based Interior um, Spray. So I don't have the brush on Verithane right now. I use also floor, um, I don't know if it's floor sealer or floor cleaner, I can't remember. <laughs> um, floor polish, I think it is what it is. But this is easier for items that have powder on them that might spread if you use a brush. So I just do, did a couple coats. Um, it's pretty quick drying, maybe 20 minutes between coats. Um, just make sure it's completely dry before you do your next coat. I live in the desert. I left it outside for a couple minutes and it was dry. <laughs> so um, what I'm gonna do for our, I'm gonna put the, the turquoise to the side. For our two pairs of earrings, I have my uh, pin, I don't know if it's a pin drill, but I, it, I call it a hand drill. Uh, I got this on Amazon I think it was ten dollars or less ish um, I'm just gonna put a mark there so I can start a hole and I'm going to grab it and kind of push and twist um, I have a Dremel you can just use a regular household drill which I've done before too. anything will work this gives you a little bit more precision um, if you're guiding the drill yourself and it's not electric, but if you're doing a lot of pieces at once, a Dremel or an uh, electric drill is totally fine. So that's a little off center, but it'll be fine. I'm going to actually wire wrap this and not use a, uh, a, ba um, a bale or a jump ring. So there's our first one. So cute. These are just, I just love that shimmer on there um, and we'll do our next one i 
and I'm not 100% sure what size drill bit this is. It's just, I actually broke the one that I was using the most. I was drilling some pearls and I was not doing them the right way. Um, so I broke that one, but this one's totally fine. Fits a jump ring through. I'm gonna go ahead and do the purple and I'll be right back. Okay, so for this part of the video, um, you'll need some earring findings. I just have some silver, um, a pair of snips, I also have some crystals in various colors, um, and by various colors, I mean two different colors. <laughs> I have some aqua green and some aqua blue. <laughs> and then um, I have some wire. I'm pretty sure this is 20 gauge wire. It's just craft wire. Um, I have bail making pliers and regular my regular beetle on double tipped pliers. And then here are the bail, make, bail making pliers. Um, and then I have somewhere, yep, yeah, some spacers. Um, I have these crystal spacers and then I have regular silver ball spacer beads and um, some daisy spacers and some other findings in a little little box here. So we'll get to that in just a moment. All right, so I'm going to cut a length of wire, just a few inches. I mean, eight inches or less is fine. Uh, I tend to cut a ton of wire and then not use it, which is what I'm probably going to end up doing today. So I'm just going to cut off a piece of wire. I'm going to take my bail making pliers and I'm going to use the smaller edge. So I'm going to put the um, wire between the two, the two um, plier pieces. I don't know what the proper term for that is. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and just wrap around the smaller plier until I meet the wire again. So we have a nice even loop and then I'm just going to grab it and turn it 90 degrees so we have a nice large loop. Isn't that pretty? Looks great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take my other pliers, open up, hopefully this fits in my cupcake otherwise we're going to make a different loop. Open it up by twisting, don't pull. And then I'm going to go ahead and slip that on. And actually, now that I think about it, I did this wrong. I wanted to wire wrap this. So that's one option. I'll do it on this one like that so you can kind of just see it. That's totally fine if you want to do that. And actually, we'll just keep it like that because we want simple, right? That's, it's not always easy to wire wrap. So we'll just keep that like that. Really cute. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. And then we're just gonna stack a couple beads on the top and then we'll be good to put our earring finding on. Um, I'm going to grab, for the purple, I want the one that's a little bit more blue. I'm going to grab um, those. I have a couple daisy spacers and then a couple ball spacers. Just, I'm kind of winging it here. I don't really know what I want to use yet. Um, and then I have some of these crystal rondel spacers. And I might want to go get some bigger daisy spacers. So we'll see how it plays out. I have two. I have a bunch of different sizes here, so I don't know what's, what's going to work. <gasps> well, if you heard that, one of these, this whole, whole thing just went flying. <laughs> so I'll have fun cleaning that up after filming. But thankfully... Two of them made it. <laughs> All right. Anyway, it's always fun and crazy in my bead room. All right. So I'm going to try and put, I'm going to put one of these, I'm going to put the bigger spacer on the bottom and see if it, sometimes it looks okay. But well, we can, we can do a little bit more here, see what's going to happen. Kind of like that because it, it seats the bead in the cupcake and it kind of looks like a cherry on top of the cupcake. That's kind of awesome. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to put one more spacer, one of these daisies, see if that fits inside. Oh yeah, that looks great. And then one of these guys. So cute. 
and it's so fun and it's so happy oh my gosh this makes me want to wear earrings <laughs> so i'm going to make a loop at the top and i am going to wire wrap it at the top just to get it to kind of stay uh stationary so it doesn't so the beads aren't move, well the beads are probably going to move around a little bit but they're not going to move around a lot so i'm going to bring that around i'm going to and turn it up a little bit and then bring it to the back. And then I'm going to grab my wire with my pliers. You can always use um, uh, nylon jaw pliers to make sure that your wire doesn't mar, but that's okay, I'm good here. So there we go, here's our little cupcake topper he's so cute oh, it's so cute Laura I want to keep your earrings but I have to send them to you <laughs> yeah, because you were my inspiration for these you deserve to have the earrings so plus guys Laura is my cheerleader in everything I do so tell her thank you for being being Brittany's cheerleader she deserves it um, I don't want to use a jump ring to put it on my earring finding so i'm just going to twist this to the right okay so now the loop is facing forward oh my gosh it's so yummy i want to eat it but i can't because it's clay oh goodness okay so i'll go ahead and grab an earring finding Let me know how you guys feel about seeing the tutorial on the piece and then making uh, something with it. Because I can always just do the piece. I don't have to make the jewelry with it too. Some of you might just want the polymer clay piece. All right. Okay. And you can always just stop, I guess, at that part if you don't want to see me turn it into jewelry. <gasps> so cute, Laura. I hope you really like these earrings. Otherwise, I'm going to hunt you down and I'm going to take them back. <laughs> All right, so there's one earring. I'll make the second in a moment. And then we're going to do the exact same thing, but with the peach pear and the lighter green. So let me cut these open. I'm going to have to hunt down some of these uh, rondelles because I need to make the, the, the mates for these earrings. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, they're everywhere, guys. Okay. So I'll go ahead and cut another piece of wire. make it a little shorter this time because I didn't use quite as much as I thought I would. Um, grab my bail making pliers to make the same kind of loop. Just put it between the pliers right on the edge there. And then just walk it around our loop and stop once we meet. And then we'll slip it back on and just bend that at 90 degrees so we have a cute little loop. And we're going to pry, not pry, twist it open so we can put on our charm. I like doing this twice so you don't have to rewind, <laughs> but feel free to rewind if you need. And we're gonna put our charm on. And this, of course, you can use this for any kind of charm. You can, it does not have to be polymer clay. So I'll go ahead and close that back up. These are a little wonky because it's side sideways, but they're so cute. They're so cute. Okay, and then put that down. Our aqua. And you could put any type of beads on top. This is just my crazy little stack for today to make it look like the cherry on top. Oh, these are going to my mom. She's here, like I said, visiting. And I just want her to be able to take something home with her. All right, so we're gonna do the exact same thing. Create a loop. And we're gonna twist it around to the back. Okay, 
hold on to our loop with our pliers and just twist our wire a couple times. Oh, it's kind of covering up our little spacer bead, but that's okay. Okay, twist it to the back. And then I'm just gonna twist it. I, I guess I could do it, start it on the sideways way. And you, you could do this any way you want, but it's just easier for me the way I did it. <laughs> okay, and then I'll just snip that as far as closely as I possibly can. Grab another ear, ear wire. And of course, you can always put the ear wire on without opening this up. You could just wire it on. It's so much easier to do it this way for me. But everybody has their own way of doing things. And, you know, one way, even though it could achieve the same results, might be just be easier for you. So please don't feel like you have to do it the way I do it. Okay, we're going to close our ear wire. And there's my mom's earring. So cute. This one I didn't really clean up. Um after cutting. So you can always take, let me see, you can take um, some paper, uh, sandpaper. You can use your fingernail afterwards. Um, I'll probably hit this with my Dremel later. But look at this, so cute. Oh my gosh, it looks like a dream. Uh, my um, dream with my bestie is to own a scrapbooking slash jewelry making slash cupcake store. <laughs> So one of those, one of the days after we're both retired in the very, well, hopefully near, near future, but it's probably going to be much further away, we will have our dream or if we win the lottery. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and create the mates for this one and this one, and I'll be right back. Okay, as I was finishing the last purple earring, something happened and I wanted you to see me fix it instead of me not showing you. So um, while I was wire wrapping this, I didn't notice that the loop down here opened and this rondelle slid down a little bit. No worries. All I'm going to do is move this back down, uh, move the, hold it upside down so the rondelle moves back down. I'll go ahead and grab my wire and just kind of roll that in and close it up and it'll be perfectly fine. And then we have our finished set of earrings. Oop, I'm gonna move this over just a little bit. So cute. So there's one set so to um, commemorate my friendship with my bestie, because she loves purple. I love turquoise, and we both love cupcakes. <laughs> um, and then this set is from my mom, because I love pink and green and aqua, and it's to commemorate birthday weekend 2020 when she visited me so it's so cute this one is for me to commemorate both but I don't know what I want to do with it yet I think I'm going to make a bracelet with it um, I will use this and you at some point <laughs> and you'll see it in a future video whether it's a finished jewelry video a bracelet video or another tutorial so anyway thank you so much for watching um, let me know if you like this video if you want to see some more videos what you liked what you didn't like and I cannot wait to show you more um, polymer clay stuff. I mean, making your own charms is just my favorite thing to do. Yeah, this cutter came from, from the Heart Supplies. Check them out, I'll leave the link below. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for Goldie, she's the cutest thing alive, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye-bye.